Welcome to 13 Cubed. In this episode, we're going to take a look at a relatively obscure evidence of execution artifact. Now, this isn't exactly new information. It's actually based on research by Harl Segev, originally published in mid-2022. You'll find his article linked in the description below. However, I wasn't aware of the artifact until my work colleague, Amir Hussein Shaheen, brought it to my attention. So let me show you how it works, and then we'll discuss the key takeaways and why this artifact may be useful in your investigations. Let me go ahead and bring up Registry Explorer from Eric Zimmerman, because this is going to be a registry-based artifact. As you can see, it's located within HKLM, Software, Microsoft, Radar, Heap Leak Detection, and finally, Diagnosed Applications. This particular key is associated with something called Radar, which stands for Resource Exhaustion Detection and Resolution. Radar is a component of the Windows Memory Leak Diagnostic System, which was first introduced way back with Windows Vista. Its purpose is to detect memory leaks in real time, collect diagnostic data, and use that data to help resolve application issues. Here's what you need to know. If any application appears under Diagnosed Applications, that's going to imply that that application did execute on the system, which is good news for us. Now, in this case, you'll notice that we only have three applications listed. So clearly not every application that executes on the system is going to be tracked here. So how does an application end up here? Well, it turns out that one of the ways an application would be tracked under diagnosed applications is if it consumes 5% or more of the available system memory. That's true with systems with four gigabytes of RAM. On systems with eight gigabytes of RAM or more, that threshold is going to be less than 5%. So it is a bit luck of the draw, if you will, as to whether or not the application of interest would even end up here in the first place. But if it does, then you can say with high confidence that it did execute on the system. Now, the next logical question I'm sure you have is, when did it execute? Well, let's pick on mstsc.exe. Notice that when I click on this particular subkey, we do have a value named last detection time with this fairly long number. Now it is possible to convert this number into a normal human readable timestamp, but that's still not going to be very helpful. This last detection time is going to be updated within minutes of an application exceeding that particular threshold that we just talked about. So when that threshold is exceeded, within minutes, this last detection time is going to be updated. That does not equate to the actual execution time. So we really can't use last detection time for that purpose. But one of the things you may have noticed is these applications are tracked in their own subkeys underneath diagnosed applications. What does that mean? Well, it means that we have a last write timestamp available because remember in the registry, keys and subkeys have last write timestamps. Values do not. So in the instance of mstsc.exe, we can see that the last write time was 2024-0904 at 164502. That means that when this application was added to this particular diagnosed applications subkey, it had to have executed on or before 2024-0904 at 164502. Now, could it have executed after that point? The answer is yes. And as to whether or not this key would be updated, well, again, that would depend on whether or not the application exceeded that threshold that we just talked about, but it very well may have executed past this point. So this is not going to be one of those super valuable artifact of executions like prefetch, but it is still going to be potentially useful. Imagine a threat actor binary like a.exe that ends up tracked in diagnosed applications. At least you could say, yes, here's another piece of evidence pointing to the fact that a.exe executed on the system, and we can tell that it executed on or before this particular last write timestamp. So that's at least something. But where this artifact really comes in handy is just as another artifact of execution to add to hopefully your already existing evidence. A key tenant of forensics is the fact that you want to find as much evidence as possible pointing to a particular conclusion. Whenever possible, you never want to rely on a single artifact or a single piece of evidence, especially if it's critical to your case. So the more things you have pointing towards something happening, the better. If you can marry this up with prefetch or movie cache or some other type of artifact of execution, well, that's even better. And consider the fact that on Windows servers, this key is still going to be present. And of course, Windows servers do not have Windows prefetch turned on by default. 
which means that you won't have prefetch. But in the absence of prefetch, this could be yet even more valuable as an artifact of execution. Now, as I said, it's not going to track everything, and it is relatively hit or miss as to whether or not the application you're interested in is going to even end up here in the first place. But if it happens to be listed here, again, you can say with confidence that it did execute, and we know that it executed at least on or before the last write timestamp. It could have executed after that point as well, but again, we can at least say in this case that it executed on or before the last write timestamp. And that's something, right? That's another piece of information that we could potentially use to build a case. And that's really all there is to it. That's how we can use radar as an evidence of execution artifact. I hope you found this information useful, and I would definitely encourage you to read the article with the original research published by Harl Segev. Again, it'll be linked in the description below. But otherwise, as always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next 13 Cubed episode.